Hey guys, Daddy O here uh, from Dadventure TV with uh, Penny the Pug here, who apparently seems to like something on my chin. Penny. Yes. Look at the camera. Uh, so, doing a quick video today um, about the uh, LR4 air suspension. So, one of the fears if you are out uh, off roading is that something's going to happen with your air suspension uh, and it's going to, for whatever reason, drop down to the bump stops. It tends to do this when, uh, let me put her down here for a second. It tends to do this um, on its own for whatever reason. It thinks that's what it needs to do for safety's sake. Of course, if you're out there uh, and you're on your bump stops, you could have a problem, especially if you have uh, larger tires put in the uh, wheel wells. So I've been doing a lot of research on this because it's really the, my only real concern with off-roading with the thing. And uh, there's two solutions. You can do the uh, Proud Rhino uh, bump stop increasers. Uh, so they um, allow it so that the, when it, if it does fall down to the bump stops, it won't go down as far. Uh, you also should get the limiting straps if you're going to go off road because according to their website, uh, the increased bump stops allows for additional wheel articulation, which can overstress your CV joints and break your CV joints. Uh, so they have these limiting straps that prevents that. So you should get that also uh, if you are going to be uh, adding the bump stop, the higher bump stops. Um, but there's another way that I've been reading up uh, about this, and it's uh, disconnecting the fuses that control the electronic air suspension. And apparently there are two. There's the F26E, which is in the engine compartment, and then there's the F35P, which is in the um, gear uh, behind the passenger side um, uh, glove box. And the uh, F26E controls the whole thing. So if you take that fuse out, the entire air suspension uh, just doesn't have any uh, power going to it. So it can't do anything. So the idea being you get it to the height that you want it. You take out the F35E. Um, Penny here is looking for love. You take out the F35E uh, fuse and then you basically kill its ability to uh, lower. Now you will obviously lose its ability to auto level and also you won't be able to uh, raise it uh, any further. Uh, but if you're not worried about that, uh, it's an option, especially it's an option if like you're crossing a, a stream or a riverbed or uh, doing something else. Maybe you're going over, uh, you're going to be on a um, washboard for quite a, quite a distance. Uh, that can really mess up the sensors sometimes. Um, and uh, that can, that can be a solution. The other uh, one, the one that's in the glove box, the F35P, my understanding is that that only works while it is, um, while it's running. So if you turn it off, uh, it can reset and then it can still drop to the bump stops after. So it, that one is easy to do, I guess, um, cause it's interior. And if you are going to have the, uh, vehicle on the whole time, then you can just pull that one. So I'm going to go out and uh, take a look at these. I've got a diagram. I'll put it in the link below to the LR4, uh, fuses and uh, where they're located and uh, we'll go see what we can find out here so uh, here's the engine bay and my LR4 this is the cover over the battery and the uh, fuse boxes storage uh, compartment is under there so we'll open this up and then we'll get to the fuse box so here is the uh, battery compartment and the fuse box compartment uh, with both of the lids off so we're going to go look at the diagram and figure out which one is F26E. All right, guys, so here's the uh, fuse boxes. F26 should be that one right there it does list it as a number 20 fuse and it's three up from the from this end here so uh let's pull it out and uh, see if this is the right one well she's out so now let's go uh start up the car and uh yeah <laughs> see what we get Got a warning light. 
bonnet open. Well, I know that. Suspension fault. Perfect. That's what I'm looking for. Right here. There it is. Bonnet open. Suspension fault. So now she shouldn't work. So now with the suspension fault on, she shouldn't be able to raise or lower. So let's try this. Yep, dead, dead, dead as a doornail. Sweet. So that's the, uh, that's the air suspension. And very simple. Just used a set of needle nose pliers to pull it out. I will tell you one thing, guys. You want to make sure this is definitely on because uh, I got some water in there and it screwed up um, the uh, one of the fuses, the one that controls the um, gear rocks. So, at any rate, uh, just make sure this thing's always on tight and then also the cover is on here tight. But uh, for right now, I'm going to keep this off because I just want to drive around the block and uh, make sure she runs with the... With the uh, fuse out, and let's see. Hey guys, so suspension fault light is still on. We're uh, gonna drive now. Obviously, the biggest issue is make sure you don't lose that fuse. I put mine in the uh, my little cigarette um, uh, ashtray, where I keep change and some mountain little mountain bike parts so far so good though I'm just gonna go around the block here yeah cool so that does it kill the EIS uh, ECU and prevent it from dropping to uh, the bump stops if you're out now you can't raise it like I said, but uh, I've got this thing on uh, the two inch Johnson rod lifts, as many of you know if you've seen my other vids, um, and the bigger tires. So I've got about 10 and a half inches of ground clearance on this, which is plenty for most of what I do. Of course, if you want to do it, um, you need to use it. Oops, sorry about that. Just go out and put it back in. I mean, it's a two, two minute job. So very cool. All right, guys, well, that's about it here. Uh, hope that helps. Probably uh, works on the Defender, I would think, as well. I'll have to look and see. But uh, it's a great way to avoid having to worry about the vehicle dropping to the bump stops and uh, leaving you stuck out there on the trail. That's it for now. See you out there on the trail.